Welcome back to Real Estate 101. Today we're gonna to continue our discussion on home staging and we're gonna talk about the importance of listing photos and preparing your home for listing photos. And I'm pleased to be joined once again by Michelle Finnamore of Michelle Finnamore Interiors. Michelle, welcome back to the show. Thanks Joe, glad to be here. All right, Michelle, so as we both know, listing photos are extremely important when trying to sell your home. Um, what can sellers do or not do uh, to get the most out of, out of, out of a listing photo? It's a really good question because buyers now, when they're looking online, they really do expect to see homes in model home condition. The expectations that they have are very, very high and most people don't live in that manner. So you really do need a detailed plan of how to make that happen. All right, Michelle, so how do we get buyers to spend more time looking at photos? That's a really good question because most buyers spend less than five seconds looking at listing photos. They do surveys on these types of questions and buyers are very, very quick to click through to the next listing photo. So if we don't have your property prepared and marketed for those listing photos, then we can't get them to put your listing on their must-see list. And that's what we're trying to do. This is the first gateway to getting them to put your property on their must-see list. All right, so doesn't don't you think that makes home sellers a little nervous, like putting those expectations on them for... Absolutely, it should make them nervous because we don't live in that manner. We actually live day to day. We don't even actually see our houses when we come into them. We actually just come in the door, throw our things down, right. start our activities for the night. We don't actually see what other people see when they come into our home. Quite often I'll take photographs of someone's home, uh, the particular rooms that we're standing in, and I'll show them. I say, this is what people actually see when they come in your home. And when I show them to the homeowner, they just, they're aghast. They just can't believe that's what their house looks like. Now, many people keep their home in an orderly manner, and that's good. There's always still a little bit of tweaking that we do because we face the room for the photographer. So when he's taking the photographs, it does look like a magazine shot. So what do you specifically do to help homeowners, you know, take away some of that stress. Yes, it's very stressful moving, number one, just period, just moving is stressful for most people. Absolutely. So what we do is we go in as a team, we give you a room by room detailed uh, handbook that will explain to you exactly in each room what you should be doing. So whether it's uh, editing a closet, whether it's rearranging furniture, whether it needs a paint job, everything is written down there step by step. And most people, they'll get a little nervous because they're seeing that this is going to maybe take a little bit of time and they thought they were just going to put the house on the market within a day or so. And the thing is to get the most money for the house that you really do want to take the time and do this. Uh, our team, we know we allow 20 to 30 minutes per room and that's sometimes doable for a homeowner if they can break it up over a number of days. They know each day they're going to look at their booklet, look at each room under that heading and then do what it says to do on that page. And when it's done, it's done, get the house listed, then the photographs look like they're supposed to look. Alright, so what if sellers um, need help or they don't have the time or inclination to do to prepare for online listing photos? Like, what do we do? I know it's a really good question because a lot of people don't know where to start. They are busy enough in their everyday life and they really just don't even know, everyone says, you know, use Google. Well, yeah. how do you trust someone when you find them on Google? So we actually have a, a several people that we work with, different companies, that provide different services. So if you need someone to pack, we'll call in a company that, that can pack up for you. If you need moving boxes, then I'll let you know where to go get them wholesale. If you need a painter, I have a company I work with, he has 30 painters. He will show up that day to give a price and start painting the next day. So everything happens very quickly. If you have a tight timeline, we're going to meet it for you. Okay, so what can home sellers expect from, from these extra efforts when preparing for online listing photos? Well, from experience, what we see over and over and over again, as we do get many listings that were listed before with a different realtor, and now they're looking for another way of marketing the home, and they've called in a new agent. And what we see is, typically, is that once it's been staged properly and photographed professionally, that actually you will get uh, multiple offers on many occasions. You'll actually see where it will sell uh, for more than what you originally thought it could maybe sell for. And it's always le definitely less days on market. Okay, so. Here's another question for you. What can home sellers do before you arrive if they're really trying to grab buyer's attention? Mm. What can they do with their home? The one big thing I really insist on is actually editing the closets. So we want it to be about two thirds full. That's a really good number to work with. The easiest way to make that happen is to actually take out 
the season of clothing that's furthest away from us right now. So if we're sitting and it's winter, then you would take out the summer things, you put them in your empty suitcases if you still have them at the house. Nice and easy, that's how you do it. And then they would just sit where the suitcases would normally sit. And preferably that's in the basement. Right. And from there, I like them to have all the same types of hangers. So whether it's wood, uh, wood always looks best, or if it's plastic, make sure they're all white. If they have multiple colors of hangers and they, they don't really want to go out and buy new hangers, then I insist that all the hangers of the same color are, are all parked together in the same area. So it'll be white, blue, black, whatever. And then I do like to see it where you put one finger between each hanger so it actually, when you open up the closet, it actually looks like you're at a store. Those types of efforts pay off. The person that's coming through and seeing that house to buy it, they remember that house. And no one really lives that way. Well, I shouldn't say no one. A few people do that I know. Right. But for the most part, most people do not live that way, but they buy into the thoughts of living that way. Yeah, absolutely. It, their lives are hectic too, and they just want some organization in their life and to feel like they have control over things. And that look in the closet or in a cabinet, in pantries, we actually do it too. We face all the larger food products to the front of the shelf. And in behind, we don't care what it looks like back there, but we definitely along the, the shelf line want to see it just like at the store. People buy into it, they will buy that house. They actually will think it looks very spacious and it has tons of storage and it's worth the effort to do it. So we don't have to do that for photograph day, but you definitely have to make sure this all happens for uh, first agent open house or any public houses. All right, Michelle, so what is one thing homeowners shouldn't do? Okay, the number one thing they shouldn't do is pack up everything before I get there. I have walked into homes where there is not anything left. They literally just have furniture left. They've cleared off every surface of every cabinet, dresser, kitchen counter, and then there's no uh, life in the house. There's, there's no character. So we do want you to leave those things out for us. We want to see what's there because we want to see what we want to use for our staging efforts. And if you pack it up, then you're either going to have to unpack it or you're going to have to borrow it or rent it from our company. But we definitely do not want you to pack everything up before we get there. You can start editing the closets before we get there. You can definitely take out the clothing and things that you're not going to be needing, extra shoes. But you definitely want to leave us things to work with. Michelle, you make it super easy for home sellers to prepare their home for listing photos, as I know firsthand. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago we worked on that one property, uh, you came in and you did your thing and it was on the market for four days and it sold. So I always, I always recommend your service, I think you guys are fabulous in everything you do. And uh, do you have any last tips or anything else you'd like to tell our viewers today? Always the same thing, Joe. Staging is always less than the first price reduction. So if you're thinking about not staging your house for sale, you really have to stop and ask yourself, how much would the first price reduction be? If it's $10,000, $20,000? We are nowhere near that level of uh, price for staging and you'll definitely get your house sold more quickly. You'll get those people out of your life because it's very uncomfortable having strangers come through your home. So staging is always a great investment. Absolutely. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks very much for coming on today's show. Thanks, John. If anybody has any more questions or needs the help of a top home stager, they can get in contact with Michelle Finnamore, the go-to girl of home staging. I'm your host, Joe Tresera. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.